Joining us now in Studio B, national champion quarterback for BYU 1984, Robbie Bosco. It's been a while. Welcome back. It has been. Thanks for the invite. All right. we I'm fascinated by the science and the mental capacity and the stress that goes into a quarterback competition. BYU football is in the heat of one right now. You have done this before. What's it like to prepare yourself as a quarterback going into camp thinking, okay, I, I need to step up and prove that I'm better than these other guys? Yeah, the first thing is all about confidence. You have to have the confidence that you're the guy and that <clears throat> regardless of what happens, that you're going to be the quarterback they choose. And uh, you can't worry about what the other guys do. If they're completing all these balls and throwing touchdown passes, you can't worry about that. It's out of your control. But you can worry about yourself and how you prepare uh, mentally, physically. And they've been doing this all summer. So I'm not worried about that. They're all ready to go that way. But now it's the mental game. It's the times where you have nothing downfield. Can you hit your checkoffs? Do you know where everybody is on the field? Do you know where they're coming from blitz-wise? And those that can do that are the ones that are going to move the chains. And the ones that are the most consistent are the ones that are going to play. It's interesting, as fans, people always look at, oh, they, he must be a favorite because I would have picked this guy. Well, when you're in there every day, all the meetings, it's just a different perspective sure. on who can get it done. And so, I mean, as coaches, this is their, their, this is their life. So they're going to play the best guy that they feel they can win with. You know, it is interesting because, I mean, it really does, and specifically just about the quarterbacks, I mean, it is a mental game in terms of you, you, you know that you a lot's on the line, but you can't stress yourself out worrying about it. So how do you make that distinction to where you, where you can allow yourself to just go out and play to the best of your ability? You just got to do it. There's, I don't know if there's any secret chemistry to that. You just got to go out there and have fun and, and kind of be a leader. There's some things outside of throwing completions that will make a difference. We've had quarterbacks in the past where they weren't great leaders. They weren't in the weight room when they were supposed to. And players, coaches, people notice those things. So do what you're supposed to do. If you're supposed to be in the weight room, be in there. Be the first one in there. Be a team guy. If you can get the players to surround you, and it's, it's not a competition of who likes me better, <laughs> but, but it all helps. You know, if, you, if your offensive line doesn't like you or trust you, then that's not going to be good. So you just got to be a good team guy. Go out there, have fun, do the best you can, and just play with confidence. And they'll, they'll find the guy that fits. And, and the guys that aren't picked, they got to work just as hard because we've seen it the last three, four years – it takes one play where your turn is going to come up. And in that time, you have, to make it you have to make it shine. A good example of this is Brandon Doman. I remember when we were coaching him, he could not throw a ball from me to you. He couldn't do it. And so finally, we're four and six. We're going up against the two best defenses in our conference. And we're like, let's give Brandon a chance. We'll see what he can do. We'll add the option in there. And we'll see if we, we can get any better. Look what he did. He shined. And sometimes you don't notice those. Some guy, sometimes guys are just gamers. They may not be great practice guys, and he eventually was a great practice guy, but he was a gamer, and he got it done. And he turned out to be one of the great quarterbacks that we've had here. Robbie Bosco, the man who helped make Brandon Doman the star <laughs> of 2000 and 2001. Former BYU coach, former NFL quarterback, and 1984 National Championship quarterback with us in Studio B. I'm glad you brought up leadership. We've spent the past month talking about how critical that is and the fact that BYU needs it. It, it kind of seemed non-existent last year, and that's probably understated. <sighs> Who are the leaders on your team from 1984, and what kind of a difference did that make in that season? You know, it's, it's interesting. There are different kind of leaders. There are the vocal leaders, which I was not. Uh, there are the ones that are by example, which I would have said I'm probably more, more like that. Then there's some that just can flat out play. The Kurt, Kurt Govea, for instance, he was not – uh, a big talker, so he didn't motivate players by that. Um, he was just an unbelievable player, 
And so people looked up to him as, hey, let's get going. Gove is making all these plays. We want to try to be like him. But then you have those guys like a Kyle Morrell, who's very vocal. And one quick story on him, we're playing at Utah. We're up in our hotel. And uh, we do these Friday night speeches. And all of a sudden, he picks up a ketchup bottle, chucks it across the room, splatters against the wall, and we're ready to go. We're all pumped up, and let's go. <laughs> and so, you know what? Not that you have to go to those extremes. Don't throw any ketchup bottles at anybody. <laughs> but, I mean, so there's different kind of leaders. It's not just about um, – I don't know if there's just one thing that makes a difference, but – You've got to have leadership. And I agree with you, Spencer. It seemed like the last few years we really haven't had a guy that's been able to get anybody up to a certain level. We've just kind of stayed down here. So hopefully we get some good leaders out there and some vocal ones, some guys that can lead by example and make a difference. How do you help coach that into a program? Can you? No. No. That's just a natural thing. I really don't believe you're either born a leader or you're not. And like for me, I was not a very vocal leader. I was kind of quiet and everything like that. But the guys knew they could trust me and they could count on me. And I kind of played, and it was kind of my playing that kind of tried to show them. Um, but you really can't coach that up. You can't tell a guy, go out there and be vo more vocal. Because it's their own personality and it's just hard to change. You know, you talked a minute ago about once the quarterback is named, the guys that aren't named – it's up to them to stay ready and prepare as if they're the starter. Take us back to, to 84. What, what was the relationship like between you and Blaine once the depth chart was solidified? Yeah. So me and Blaine were always good friends. I mean, we roomed together as freshmen. And uh, when you look at just me and him, we never had any animosity between the both of us. And even when I was named the starter, he was always right there. He was... Uh, he worked hard, and the team knew if something happened to me that he could go in there and perform. But it's just the sport we play that we weren't, during that time, a two-team quarterback. I didn't say that right. A two-guy quarterback team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We're going to pick a starter, and you're going to stick with them. And that's what I prefer. I don't like the trade-off things because you just can't get going. But, uh, but he was ready to go when he had his chances, and uh, he did a good job. What's the appropriate timeline? I mean, you've lived it as a player and a coach and now just as an observer in the athletic department. What, what do you feel like is the appropriate timeline or what works best given a scenario like BYU has this year where they've got three guys primarily competing for that job? When, when is the best time to name a guy and go with him? Personally, as soon as possible. I mean, you want that guy. Look, at some guys wait till about a, a week before and then the team kind of gathers around them. To me, it's too late. Once you really know and you feel confident about that's the guy, to me, you got to name him. Now, if they're not ready, maybe it's going to be a week before, then so be it. But once you know, to me, the sooner the better. You can get acclimated. You as a quarterback will just be in a different mode, and hopefully they, that can uh, help you to help lead that team a little bit stronger. You know, besides just naming a quarterback, there's obviously the, the added uh, importance of putting in this new offensive scheme. W what advice would you give to, to this team, especially the offense, as they try and implement a new offense, but also just trying to bounce back from a year that everybody, you know, really wants to improve upon? Yeah. Well, I think they struggled so much last year. I think any new addition, they're going to pump up the players. So they're, they're, they got to be excited about what's going on and how the coaches are responding and how they're coaching them up right now. So I think there's a lot of excitement. Um, but going, even going back to naming a starter with the new offense, you want to try to get that guy as many reps as you can. You don't want to be splitting reps three ways, four ways, trying to figure out who the quarterback is, and then you have a week and a half before the first game. So I think that's the big difference. So I think the guys are excited. I've talked to a few of them, and – I think they're ready to go. What's a day in the life of Robbie Bosco like right now? Oh, don't say right now because then everybody's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do play a lot of golf. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and he's really good. I play with, you know, we take donors out, able to take donors out, and uh, it's just fun. It's fun, the job I have now, and being able to implement raising money and being able to golf and do stuff like that. Um, and then, then it's really important for Tom – 
to get our name out there. So I play in a lot of corporate events and sure. have BYU out there and stuff like that. So now, what people don't know about Robbie is you were a huge part of resurrecting the BYU women's golf team back in the day. <laughs> And, and now look what Kerry Roberts and that team are doing right now. Oh, yeah. Now. I mean, you without, laid the foundation. Without me, man. I don't know if they would have been that laid, top ten you team. You laid the <laughs> For foundation. sure. Thank you, Smell. I'll take that credit. Take all the credit, Robbie. Kerry's going to send me a series of angry texts will. in about will. I have nothing minutes. to do with it. <laughs> Robbie, great to talk to you. Uh, fascinating insight into uh, what uh, these quarterbacks know. Thanks yeah, so much. Stuff. Thank you very much for having me. All righty. The national champion quarterback. And we learned today the one who said, Let's put Doman in and run the option. <laughs> it worked out well. That it, it turned out that that was a genius move. <laughs> Some of the best football to watch as a Robbie, fan. Robbie, you need to come back more often. That, we uh, that, we like you, man. Yeah, that was awesome.